So Stewart's gone. You've got the you've had the Carlisle game, uh, missed out on the playoffs, and then the next season you used forty seven players, had a terrible start to the season, one point, you know, one win in the opening nine games, um, and it was looking a bit tricky at one stage, wasn't it? I think remember you signed Ryan Williams, who made a big impact early on. And you turned it around, finished halfway up the table. But at one stage, it was, uh, especially the start of the season, it was it was a tricky time. Yeah, I think when you would had uh, the phenomenal success we'd had, because you know, if it takes a club, I don't know, three years to get out of Ryman, then you wouldn't naturally assume you're going to be playoff, playoff, very nearly getting out, going into the Football League. And... Uh, in them days, you didn't have the conference south, obviously. Um, and you didn't have the luxury of that and, and bedding the side in. So um, were you going to have a reaction after the playoff defeat? Yeah, you were. Uh, did we turn it around? Yes, we did. Um, I don't know. What did we finish up that year? What did, When we left, did we finish up 8th or 10th? Or? It's 13th in 05, 06. And then the following season, obviously, that's when you got your... Your Marcus Gales and Ricky Newmans and, and John Grant and, and had a real go for it. Yeah, uh, if, if I look at um, it's like everything else in in life, Graham. If you do things in the right order, it's fantastic. So if you go into the conference and you finish thirteenth, then you finish eighth, then you get in the playoffs, then you get in the final, then that's a logical sequence. And supporters are okay with that. If you take them in the first two years of that journey in the playoff finals, and, and I don't just mean all the shot supporters, every supporter in the world is going to think, well, that's what that's what we're about. We're a we're a top conference side. And uh, I think we'd we gallop, like I said earlier, we weren't ready to go up. We'd gallop beyond our means. And and yeah, you're going to get a reaction, and and I'm I'm also a believer that okay, I was lucky enough to have more or less ten years at my home club pace, um, because the expectancy level wasn't that high, and we overachieved. What's overachieving for Aldershot and what's overachieving for Wimbledon? Two totally different ball games, and I think you have a time span. I think. Uh, uh, I think five years at Aldershot, five years at Wimbledon. It's about the fans have had enough of the same face. Fans get fed up with you going and saying, I thought we were the better team today. I thought we played well, had a lot of possession. They're not interested. They want, they want continued promotion. And when you are a big club like Aldershot, they still want it now. There's been a certain realisation when Gary went back in, I felt I watched it a few games in his last year, and it's it was hard work. It was hard work for Gary. It was hard work watching Gary, and you knew he didn't have the resources that other clubs had. And I don't care who you are, um, you can punch above your weight for so long, but there's some big teams start coming in that conference and some... Uh, Big team. Was that the right time for me to leave? Obviously, I had the issues with my my lovely wife Susie, and I, I had to pack up. Um, but um, she she was in hospital a year there, so wasn't much I could do really once she was in hospital. And um, it was, I think, it was the right time for for me to leave all the shop. Got the opportunity to wave goodbye to the fans at the Weymouth game. The players were great. The fans were great. Uh, the board, um, the board paid me up my uh, my money to the end of the season, which was a lifesaver for me. Because when people sometimes look and say you've had a successful career, it's not like you had a career in the Premier League. You had a career in non-league football. It don't make you uh, a multi-millionaire. It, it makes you being able to pay the mortgage and being able to pay your rent or, or your, your your gas bills. So um, I can remember that all the shot fans being brilliant with me after that and give me a bucket that must have had a, at least a couple of hundred quid in, in pound coins. And me and Natalie lived off of that for, 
until I got the Wimbledon job. So, no, big thanks to the Aldershot crowd. And I think it was a, uh, I think it's a right time to, for me to leave. And, you know, had you known that you were going to get somebody of the calibre of Gary Waddock coming in, then blimey, what a fantastic uh, appointment he was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and Astra, I'll, I'll touch on that in a minute. Just go back to that night where where you did say goodbye, because it was a lot of, for yourself personally. It was a, a, a an immensely pressurised situation because of, of the situation with, with with your wife, which is thankfully, you know, as you said earlier on, your forty sixth wedding anniversary. Still serving up warm Budweisers. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> so immense pressure personally, but. Managers don't get that opportunity to say goodbye or on, on very often do they get the opportunity to say goodbye the way he did. And it was an extremely emotional feeling watching it from the stand. So to be in the person that they were giving their accolades to must have been, it must have felt so special, a special situation for you, but extremely emotional for you as well. An incredibly, um, incredibly rare thing to happen. And, uh, a, a fantastic thing to happen. And in a way, there would have been grumblings on the terrace. Of course there would if you've, you've been playoffs and then you're not achieving that and then you've got a mediocre side. Although, again, I, I would point out that it's, we left you some real good players there. But they weren't performing to the level that we previously performed at. So there would have been grumblings. There would have been probably talk within the boardroom, you know, should we give him to the end of the year? Should we see how this goes? And the fans would be getting um, a little bit restless. But when you come out and say, and I had to talk with, with John McGinn either, you know, uh, I think it's the right time for me to go. John agreed. And then when you put it out to the fans, then they can reflect on the whole time you've been there and reflect on the good times rather than oh, we're finishing mid-table or whatever. It was very much, uh, uh, yeah, we've had some good times here. You know, we, we, we won promotion into the conference. We've had two playoffs and we've still got a, a good football inside here. So it wasn't like we were massively underachieving. And then they can appreciate that. And they were fantastic in the crowd. I mean... We used to have, and Stuart will tell you, there'd always be the great big fat bloke who always verbally was never happy if you beat someone 6 0. He sat behind you, especially so he could let you know you was a twat. Um, I think my wife went and threw a cup of tea over him one week, which um, she's still quite happy about. Uh, I hope his jump is still a mess. And. Um, I look at the East Bank, and at one stage, some of the East Bank come around and just stood behind the fat git and went, behave yourself, he's doing all right. And I loved the East Bank. They were fantastic to me. And that didn't take away the other stands. They were all brilliant as well. Uh, but if you've lost the East Bank, you best move on. And uh, I was lucky enough to leave the East Bank on good terms. And just a, a, a couple of highlights from that season, because you started the season really well. And I remember we, we were 2-0 down against Gravesend and Northfleet, beating 3-2. I think Ricky Newman got sent off. I remember beating Stevenage 4-0, and it was a fantastic win. And everyone said, we're going to win the league. And then three days later, four days later, we lose 3-1 at home to Northwich Victoria, and everything's back to, to, to reality. Uh, and he had a good FA Cup run. He got to the um, third round to Blackpool. And I can remember going there up there for the weekend and... and we were 2 0 down in four minutes, and uh, but played really well and should have got something out of the game. Yeah, we played really, really well. And and funnily enough, your, your big time players normally play well. And, and I can remember Mark Pascal, who had a smashing game, but just missed, I don't know, two, at least a couple of good sitters there. We played some beautiful football against Blackpool, but you're going to give a football league side a two goal start. Um, and like I say, that that team had some real good players in it, and uh, uh, and obviously became legends for for taking the club into the football league. And just looking, you said talked about John McGinty. There, you had Carl Prentice as, as your chairman for, for for eight years as well. So. 
it, it was quite a stable board at the time, wasn't it? It was a, not a great deal of movement within the board and that. And sometimes, do you think stability is, is more important than you know, if you have a bit of a lot of movement in a short space of time? Yeah, I think stability is massively important. Having having spent a couple of years in the chair at Basingstoke, I realised just how difficult a position it is. It's a nightmare. Every single problem is put on your table. Um, Carl Prentice and John McGinty back me 100%. They, they give me everything I ask for within reason. And that's all you can ask for your, your team. They didn't in fear interfere in football matters at all and that might sound well that's what you'd expect but boy there's enough non-league chairman out there who uh, who think they know the game better than the managers and that's something I've steered clear of at Basingstoke and almost to the point of sometimes I think should I help out here a little bit because you've got a few years of experience and I think no let the manager get on with it and it's a difficult enough job and let them make their own mistakes and let them benefit from, from those. Um, so I found the board to be uh, very good and um, no problems with them whatsoever. And uh, every time, you know, I went to them with a pull buckle, providing we had a, a good reason, then we could, we could sell it to them. Yeah, very much so. And... You, you, you talked about it a little bit earlier on the the you know the next season the club did get promotion. Sixteen of the players in the squad were players that that you'd signed either permanently or on loan during your time there. Um, a lot of managers would um, would have mixed emotions about that, but I can remember being on the pitch at St James's Park and we we're all celebrating. And the first phone call that I received was from yourself, congratulating, saying fantastic, club's got promotion to the football league, the the dream that everybody bought into and he said, pass on my best wishes to Gary. And a lot of managers would have steered clear of that kind of phone call, probably sitting there thinking, yeah, hold on a sec, that's, that's, a lot of my players have done that. But you, you had a different thought on that. Yeah, I think it would be wrong to say you didn't have a tinge of jealousy in Gray. I would have had, I would have had that tinge of jealousy in there, but I still genuinely loved the club and how they treated me through the whole five years I was there, I was certainly chuffed that they went up. The, the, uh, and I don't want to overplay the fact that a number of the players were, were ones that we bought in because I, I spoke to Martin um, in the summer after that. And Gary made a lot of changes, the way that you pressed, the way that you... He was an early, early example of the... the, the pressing game and getting the ball back quickly and playing two touch football and and he does Gary and Martin deserve the total credit for that uh, for, for, for that promotion and you know and that was hardly a fluke they'd done brilliant at Wickham as well uh, when when Wickham had the finances and um, it, it was funny because normally when you take over a, another big club which was Wimbledon we would normally be hoovering up your best players but you were in the conference and we were in what the rhyme and prem so it wasn't as though I could nick any of your players Graham Stuart and I would have done if we could <laughs> so the order shop chapter obviously has finished and we still come to a little bit of order shop before we finish but you're back in the game now Stu you've got yourself a beer you're nice and refreshed and, and you're, you're back in now because we're going to talk about you and Terry teaming up again at, at, at AFC Wimbledon. I think it, it's definitely a ground both Stu and I should go back to uh, or should should visit and, and feel like we're part of that. They value every manager that they've had through the AFC. Uh, progression because you know to get to get from the combined counties to the football league in nine years is phenomenal 